Okay, so we studied the Banzhaf power index last class. That's one way of measuring power. And the key to it was to determine how many times each player was critical. Question, yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, so um, we, already, we already talked about this, the Banzhaf power index. We use that for the Frontier High School. The key to the Banzhaf power index is determining how many times each player is critical. Right, we determine the winning coalitions, we determine who's critical, and then whoever is critical the most often has the most power. So today we're going to see um, another way to measure power in a weighted voting system called the um, Shapley-Schubick power index. So first we have to talk about some vocabulary. Um, a sequential coalition is a coalition whose order matters. So this coalition, P1, P2, P3, and I'm, instead of using curly brackets, I'm using the little arrow brackets. This coalition started with P1. P1 stood up in the middle of the room and said, I want to form a coalition. Who's with me? P2 joined next. P2 said, I'm with you. And then P3 joined. So the coalition started with P1, then P2, then P3 came on board. So the order of joining matters in a sequential coalition. So P1, P2, P3 would be different from P2, P3, P1. In our, in our previous method, the order didn't matter at all. A team was a team was a team, right? Three players put together, they make a team, the order didn't matter. In this method, the order is going to matter. Okay, so we call them sequential coalitions. So we need to think about how many sequential coalitions there are going to be when we have certain numbers of players. So let's say there's one player. How many coalitions are possible? One. OK, so let's say um, n and number of sequential coalitions. OK, so if we have one player, there's one coalition. What if you have two players, say A and B? How many sequential coalitions? Two, because you got have A, B, or B, A. Right, so there's two. So this one is just single player, one coalition. Two players, we could have A, B, or B, A. What if we have three players? Yep, three players, they have, all three are going to be a team, but the order is going to change. Six, yeah, let's see if we can list them. A, B, C, A, C, B, so CAB and CBA. So you were doing a great job of listing them uh, logically. So you said, I'm going to do all the sequential coalitions that can start with A. So you could have A first, then you could have B, then C, or C, then B. Then you write all the coalitions that can start with B. If it starts with B, then you could have A, C, or C, A come after the B. Then I have to do the coalitions that start with C. After C, I could do A, B, or B, A. And I get a total of six sequential coalitions. All right. Work in your groups for a couple of minutes. See what you can come up with for four players. Try and write them down, count them up, see how many there are. Okay, so for the group still trying to write them all down, several groups have noticed a pattern. This is, this is um, sort of the essence of being a mathematician is saying that is way too much work. I'm going to see if I can come up with this in an easier, more efficient way. So several people saw 1 times 2 is 2. 
2 times 3 is 6. And they said, well, 6 times 4 is 24. And that is correct. There are 24 sequential coalitions. So what about for 5? How many would there be for 5? 120. Good. So what if what, the problem, though, is what if I said, how many are there for 13 right, or 15? You'd have to fill out the whole chart down to 15, right? You'd have to know, in order to get to 15, you'd have to do 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 before you got there. So I'm going to take this chart, and I'm going to try to break it down a little further and see if we can um, investigate the pattern a little more. So let's see, I have make a new page here. Okay, so to get the 2, I did 1 times 2, right? All right, and to get the, the 6, I did 2 times 3. But, but the 2 came from doing 1 times 2. So I could do 1 times 2 times 3, right? And then I did, to get the 24, I did 6 times 4. But the 6 is really 1 times 2 times 3. So this is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. And to get the 120, I did 24 times 5. But 24, instead of writing it as 24, I could write it as 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, and then times the 5. So if I did 6, it would be 120 times 6, which is 720. Right? So, but instead of writing it as 120 times 6, write 120 this way. 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. That's 120 times 6. Right? So, 7 would be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6, which is 720 times 7. So what would it be if I wanted 15? 15 times 1 all the way up to 15. Yeah, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, etc., all the way up to 15. Does anybody know what this is called? It's given it's got the name factorial. So for n players, we would do 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. Keep doing this till we get to n. And we have a special um, symbol for 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 all the way up to n. We do n exclamation point, which you would read n factorial. It doesn't mean n. It means 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 up to n. So for n players, there are n factorial coalitions, sequential coalitions. So those grow big really fast. For six players, it was already up to 120 sequential coalitions. Grows quickly. But this is the idea. It's the big idea. OK, so a pivotal player. This is different than a critical player. So the vocabulary with these two methods can easily get mixed up. So you have to come up with some way of keeping them separate. A pivotal player is the player who joined that put the coalition over the top in terms of ne in terms of getting it the votes it needs to pass a motion. Okay, so if I do player 1 
player three, player two. That's my sequential coalition. And I'm going to say the quota is um, three. Quota is three. If player one has two votes, player three has one, and player two has one. So remember the way a sequential coalition works is we start by player one. Player one is in the middle of the room and they say, I'm going to start a coalition. Player three is, says, okay, I'll join you. And then player two says, I'm on board too. Which player, when they were added to the group, gave them enough votes to reach the quota? Yes, this is player, player three. Yeah, it's different than critical because in any pivot in any sequential coalition there's only one pivotal player. Yes. I just made that up. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we give players more some players more than one vote. There are times that we do that to because No, no, they just get two. It's kind, of, it's like, like the electoral college. Each some states get more votes than others, dependent on population. Okay. There are certain situations where we say you you should really have more of a say than this other person. Yeah. Question? Oh, okay. Okay. So here's the method for finding the shapley schubic power index. First, you have to write down all the sequential coalitions. So this is easy for up to three players. For four players, there are 24. In that case, I'll always write them out for you. OK. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but first, you have to write them all down. You have to write down every sequential coalition. Then you have to find the pivotal player in each sequential coalition. And then to calculate the shapley schubert power index, you count the number of times that each player is pivotal and divide by the total number of times that all players are pivotal. OK, we'll do an example. It'll be clear. So here's, um, I want to find the SSPI for this voting system, 5, 3, 2, 1, 1. So my quota is 5. Player 1 has 3 votes. Player 2 has 2 votes. Players 3 and 4 have 1 vote. Yeah, so step one is to write down all the sequential coalitions. So I wrote them all down for you. Are, these are the 24 sequential coalitions with four players. So if I look at this first one right here, imagine that this first player, player one, says, I'm going to start a coalition. Player two joins, then player three, then player four. Which player along the way? when they were added, gave the coalition enough votes to meet the quota? Player two. Player two. To meet or exceed, to get at least the quota. OK, so let's look at the next one to the, to the right of the one we just did. So player two, player one, player three, player four. So player two is starting this coalition. So it helps me if I write their number of votes above. Because so, it goes player two, player one, player three, player four. So that's two, three, one, one. Yes, yeah, so player one is the critical, uh, sorry, pivotal player. Because... Player two starts the coalition, and they say, I have two votes. I'm starting a coalition. Who wants to join me? Player one says, I'll join you. I have three votes. And they say, great. That gives us enough to meet the quota. So player one is the pivotal player. Gave enough votes to meet the quota. All right, this next one. Player three, player one, player two, player four. So player three has one vote. Player one has three votes. Player two has two votes. Player four has one vote. So player three is going to start this coalition. They have one vote. Player one says, I'll join you with my three votes. Do the two of them have enough to make uh, meet the quota? 
No. But once player two joins, they bring their two more votes, now we've gone over the quota. So player two is the pivotal player. Okay, look at this, this next one. Player four, player one, player two, player three. So this goes one, three, two, one. So who's pivotal? Player two. So the players join one at a time from left to right. As soon as the number of votes in the coalition gets to or exceeds the quota, the one that joined last is the pivotal player. Is this making sense? Okay, in your groups, find the pivotal player in the remaining coalitions. All right, so let's see. Player one, we're going to calculate their percent power. How many times did I circle player one? 14 times? So let's see. I'm just going to check them off here. I've got one. This one. Player one, player two. One and two add up to five. Yep. Okay, so let's see. There's one for player one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen circles for player one. How many total circles are there on the board? Twenty-four. So player one has fourteen out of twenty-four, which is fifty-eight percent. Good. Player two, how many times did I circle it? Six. Take your word for it. Out of 24 total, that's 25%. Player three. I only circled player three twice? Okay. So player three and player four both got circled two out of 24 times, which is what? Eight per it's not it's about eight percent, right? Yeah. Well the twenty five percent is perfect. Yep. Good. Now you should your percentages should add up to hundred percent. So this is a way to sort of check that all of your work makes sense. You can add up your percentages, make sure you get a hundred percent. Or if you rounded, you know, you should come close to a hundred percent. Or if you add up your 14, your 6, and your 2, you should, uh, your two twos, right? You should get 24. You should get the total number of circles. 14 and 6 is 20, plus 2 plus 2 makes 24. Good. So not as complicated as when I just set out in words how to do it, right? Okay. So I want you to return to the frontier power thing. And calculate the SSPI for each town this time. Instead of instead of Banzaf, do it this new way. Here is the solution for the Frontier Power SSPI. Here's the solution for the SSPI for the weighted voting system in number six. So these are the winning coalitions. To determine critical players, you say, who can't leave? Right? So if, if I look at the team of A and B, who can't leave? Neither can, neither can leave. In the A, B team, if A leaves, B doesn't have enough votes. And if B leaves, A doesn't have enough votes. So those are both critical. Same with A and C. Neither one can leave, or the remain remainder of the team doesn't have enough votes. How about in A, B, C? If A leaves, do B and C have enough votes to pass a motion? No, that means A is critical. If B leaves, do A and C have enough votes to pass a motion? 
yes, yeah, 16 and 4 is enough, so that means B is not critical. If C leaves, do A and B have enough? Yes, so C is not critical. In A, B, D, A can't leave because 8 and 1 is not enough, so A is critical. Can B leave? No, because 16 and 1 is not enough, so B is critical. B can't leave, it's critical. D can leave because 16 and 8 is enough. How about for A, C, D? Can A leave? No. Can C leave? No. Can D leave? Yeah. In A, B, C, D, can A leave? No. Nope. Can B leave? Yeah. A, C, and D left has, still have 21. Can C leave? Yeah. Can D leave? Yeah. So those are all the critical counts. Player A was circled six times out of a total of 10, 10 circles. That's 60% of the power for A. B was circled one, two times out of 10, 20%. And C, we circled two times, 20%. So this is the Banzaf power index for problem seven.